Um, we took into um, account what Will was talking about coverage-wise. We're playing all off corners this week uh, because of Will. Uh, we kind of changed up our defense this week because we, you know, we kind of got scared from talking to Will on Monday. So, um, but we had a good week um, and um, ready for Wake. Get ready to travel down there tomorrow. Question: What do you think we to really do that? <laughs> More conversations, I guess, with coaches. I guess. Do you, do you get a sense? I was going to ask you on Monday when you were talking about with, with the press and the way your, your corners play. Do you get a sense that NFL scouts sort of look at your corners a little bit differently, or maybe give a little extra credit for the, the, if they can sort of survive playing this way and playing this style that maybe they you know can handle it? There's no question about it. In, in the NFL, you've got to press. I mean, you look at you know Demario Mathis and Dane and, and the guys that we put out, Avante Maddox, and just. You know, it takes a different animal to be out there. And uh, you're exactly right, Chris. I mean, when you can press up and, and you're not scared, there's guys that are good players, maybe faster, bigger, stronger, all those other things playing at different conferences that go play, they get to the NFL. They don't want to go up there and press. Our guys don't get, you know, you just imagine you get into an NFL camp and you get in there and, and um, I didn't think we were going to talk quarter play. I was just kidding. Um, but, uh, you know, you get in a game and, and, or get in practice, get in preseason camp and you're pressed and it's like you feel comfortable. You know, I think, you know, guys go through three or four or five years of college and they feel comfortable what they've been asked to do, what they've been coached to do, what comes natural to them. And then, you know, those corners that are playing off coverage, you know, I don't know what the success rate of it. They go to the NFL and then go ahead and have, now have to press and they're kind of going, shoot, I've done this before. It's new. And I would say it's the same thing for, you know, corner that presses all the time that is going into a system that's got to play off. Um, but, you know, um, people are going to draft guys that can press and play man and, and feel comfortable because half, it, half it's all in the mind, whether you, you know, whether you feel comfortable doing it or not or you kind of get nervous. Uh, you know, we always talk to our guys about being in cool school, and sometimes they're not in cool school. Cool school means, hey, like last week we didn't have very good cool school mechanics, which means, hey, play it cool. You don't need – we're in great coverage. We don't need to hold anybody. You know, you kind of get into that thinking that he's going to get you, uh, but we're, we're, we're right there and we have to, you know, we have to play it better. When you're facing an offense like Wake Forest with their RPOs, how much more emphasis is on the rest of your defense to still play at the speed that you guys want to play at consistently, even when they're trying to make you hesitate a little bit more, which would put your corners at a disadvantage without the cover one? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a different deal. I mean, playing, um, you know, Wake Forest's offense is, is like playing the triple option, kind of. I mean, the quarterback is riding the line of scrimmage. He's got, he can hand it off and he'll pat the guy in the back and say go after he lets the ball go. Or he'll ride it in there and if he feels like the RPO is not there, then he follows the guy in the line of scrimmage. So it's really a combination of, you know, tackle the tailback on the run. Quarterback may follow right behind him or they get all the linebackers are sucking up in the box because they're riding in there so long and then he's dumping it off to any, you know, I mean, 12, 15 different variations of routes you're going to see an out by number two, a bubble by number two. Um, we call it a missile route, you know, a 10 yard out by number two, which they ran a ton of them in the uh, championship game. So we've worked the heck out of that. But uh, so, you know, they'll come back to something else. We have, you know, slant routes or glance routes on either side. I mean, there's, you know, we've worked everything. They've thrown, you know, a RPO post. They've done it all. You know, they threw a fade. Um, so they, they've got that whole, you know, repertoire of, of uh, RPOs off of the number one receiver either side or the slot receiver. It sounds like that takes a lot of eye discipline across the board to watch so many different things in that situation. Yeah, I mean, you don't, you know, the thing is the corner's got to do their job. They're obviously going to be worried about their fate or their post or whatever, or, or they run digs. Um, you know, it's safety. I mean, it's, it's really that safety that's putting it in a bind, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. um, because, he, you know, that backer's uncovering him at times. So we'll switch it up on as far as what we do with the outside backers as far as attacking the box or not attacking the box. Obviously, if you're not running your backers in the box, you'll see our backers will hold at times to sit in those windows. But then, you know, which will make that quarterback kind of a little bit confused um, just to see, you know, what we're doing. So, we've, you know, it's nothing that I'm telling you that they don't see on tape either. So... Uh, so we're holding those guys, you know, but you're guessing. And, you know, if we're not holding them and they're running the box to stop the run, then our guys are, they got to make plays on the ball. It feels like we're seeing more freshmen and sophomore play each week as the season goes on. Did you expect to have so many young guys playing, you know, starting and playing in key spots by this point in the season? Well, last last week you, you saw, you know, um, Jordan Baskey, I think four snaps on defense. And we've slowly got him in there. You know, Rasheem Biles is a guy that's played, you know, a lot of special teams. He's a football player. He's going to be really good. We're going to probably, you know, get him some snaps this week as well. Um, uh, you know, just little by little, get his feet wet and and then see what happens. I'm trying to think of the other guys. I mean, Kenny's been out there for a while. Um, you know, Izzy's played, you know, two games. 
you know, we'll try to like to hold him to four if we could. Um, just hoping, you know, stay healthy at that receiver spot. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else. You know, any BJ other young made guy? a second start. Who did? BJ made his second yeah, BJ, start. Yeah, BJ, BJ's, you know, BJ's, I think, played six games already, so yeah. he's not going to redshirt. Uh, we mm -hmm. need him, so. Has your philosophy on red shirts changed at all in the last couple of years where with the way the game is now, you don't know how long guys are going to be around at one school that maybe are you less likely to, or are you less inclined to try and hold a guy and try and hold on to his eligibility as because you just don't know, you don't know if somebody's going to be here three years from now. Yeah. I mean, you know, some people would say, we're not playing. We don't know if they're going to be here. We're not trying to do that. We're still trying to save and protect the kids, you know, year if we can, if we need them, you know, like we have loved to play, you know, Izzy Polk at receiver, you know, you know, play for, it's like, we just had the conversation here at, uh, at noon about like, okay, you know, what if, and you know, it's like, you know, Izzy's only going in if we, you know, if someone's out for the game and maybe out for the next two or three weeks. Um, but we get two more games and you, you'd rather play a guy in 40 plays as opposed to four. Um, we don't want to do that to anybody. I, don't, I just don't think that's fair. So it's not just about us. It's about the kids too. And I think kids, you know, see that, you know, we, that we're trying to protect them and, and uh, try to keep their ears. They all want to play, you know, most of the time. But I've had kids come in after four games, go coach, you know, young guys a couple years ago, like, I want a red shirt. I don't want to use any more of my games. I'm like, okay, you know. Matter of fact, yeah, I mean, we've had that. I won't give any names. Pat, it's going to. Sort of tangentially building off that, I remember I asked you, not about your corner play, but about the quarterbacks. Uh, when you made the change, and you mentioned, you said, hey, we like developing guys, and we like building guys along, but at the same time, you've had to bring in, not had to, but you brought in mm -hmm. older, more established guys. When you look at the conference, North Carolina's got a homegrown guy. You know, Duke's got a homegrown guy. You know, Travis has been in Florida and has stayed out four years, so he's essentially mm -hmm. a homegrown guy. Do you have to maybe change your philosophy on how you look at the portal quarterbacks and going forward and maybe try to get guys that you know are going to be around a couple of years? I mean, you'd like or to have you'd like to have four years, and you look at Nick Patty, who did a heck of a job for us, and um, it's great. You just want a guy, okay? The big thing. I don't think anybody cares if he's here for one or two or three or four. It's just like let's make sure he's the good one, right? You guys all want the good quarterbacks, right? Nobody would be happy if he's a bad quarterback. They, yeah, it's great. He's been here five years and he stinks. Uh, nobody wants that guy either. Um, but we're looking for the right quarterback, and you know, I, you can't sit here and put your, you know, paint yourself into a into a corner saying we're never going to ever take a transfer again because Christian's a transfer. No, um, and, and again, everybody would like to have the four and a half year, you know, the four year, four game Kenny Pickett. That's that's a, you know, a perfect situation, but uh, it, it doesn't always work out that way. But, you know, is it hard, though? Is it sort of like a chicken and the egg thing where you want to develop guys, but at the same time, if you keep bringing in other guys from outside that may be more established and might pop the freshman on the depth chart, they, I mean, you've had guys here that have come in young and not stayed because guys filter in above mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Is that a... Ugh. Is it tough to? It's I mean, tough. How do you get off that? Hey, the situation we're in right now. I mean, the situation we're in in recruiting right now is it's it's wide open and kids are transferring and and uh, you got to just play it by ear and you know there's no exact science right now at this point. So, uh, would you like a quarterback more than one year? Yes, um, and you just got to play it by ear. You know, if Caleb Williams wanted to transfer, you know, he only had one year left. You know, we got to take him. We're gonna we're not gonna take him. You know, Heisman, tro Heisman Trophy. You know, so you got you, you play it by ear and, and get who you get. Pick a starter for five seasons. I think we're ever seeing anybody do that again. Boy, that's that's a great question. At right? one school. At one know. school. Yeah, that's that's a good question. Probably say no. I can't remember if it was before Virginia Tech or Louisville, but he talked about Bob and just how hard he works and what a positive guy he is. How rewarding was it to see him have the kind of game he did against Louisville and break through a little bit? Uh, it was it was great. I mean, it's good to see all those guys get their opportunities and throw the ball. And you know, you hope you can get a little bit more of that every week. Um, you know, uh, whether it's you know, play action or, or drop back, whatever it may be. Um, but uh, you want to see everybody have success. That's why they all came here. And um, it, it was good to see Bub really the last two weeks have two big big time you know, uh, routes down the field for touchdowns. Pat Tackman told us that Christian's been spending a lot of time in the receiver room. How unique is the time that, that he does that? What's the, what do you see as the value? Um, he's in that receiver room, and again, I don't see when he's in there. Uh, I know he was in there, you know, 550 this morning watching tape uh, in the receiver room. He's in the receiver room because Coach Signetti's in the other room, and he can't get uh, the film himself. We don't really have a, you know, quarterback room set, so he's just, you know, placed himself in there because he's got a place to watch videotape. Um, other than that, I'm not sure if he's been in with the receivers. I, you know, when he was in there this morning, there was nobody in there except him. 
Um, so um, I, cu I couldn't answer whether they're well, he he, together. He's with, with the receivers. He's been spending a lot of time with them in that room. Good. Do you see that I haven't seen it because I'm usually in my room, you know, watching my tape. But uh, I think that's huge if they're if they're doing that. You know, uh, I've talked to Coach Underwood about that. But again, that doesn't shock me, and I wouldn't shock me if if you know Phil was doing the same thing. But you talked about the importance of the outside linebackers being in the right passing lanes, being in the right spots. How have you seen Solomon and Bengali? I know Bengali just came back from injury, but Solomon seemed like he was in a lot of the right places last week. How have you seen him him grow and understanding how he fits in? The yeah, I mean the Shields has been really good. Um, you know, I've been. You know, again, Big Ali was rusty last week. I hope he's not rusty this week. Uh, he needs to play really good uh, for us to have a chance on the road. So, um, but, you know, DeShields has really been, you know, he's been sharp. I mean, he's really bought into the linebacker position. He's physical. Um, I've been I've been impressed with him a lot. So, and, he, and he's doing the right thing. So, uh, again, this is one of those ones that, you know, you start to attack a gap and then you think it's a pass and then you pop out to try to help. And, and, and you, you know, it's one of those you just got to keep going and, and blitz the quarterback and go sack him. You know, does, does get Don, sucked up. Sorry, uh, does Donovan's role? I mean, he's, he's such a good tackler. Does does he give you the chance to be a little bit more flexible to say not necessarily him being a linebacker, but maybe like a dimebacker where you guys can use that, but also use his athleticism to play safety at the same time. Mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm confused with the question. You want to play like, like, nickel? You back? can use him not in a traditional safety or linebacker role, but in a, sort of a tweener role to help in situations like that, where he can help against the run, but also maybe be quicker than some of your linebackers to help against the pass. Yeah, I mean that would be hard to do. We, we couldn't put that in on Thursday, but uh, but um, you know you're saying use a nickelback instead of a linebacker out there that's quicker. Yeah, I don't. I think they're still in a run pass conflict. Okay, mm -hmm. it's called a conflict, and you know if you're a step faster, I don't think it's going to help you at all. I mean, um, and you know the fits are you know fits take a long time to, to work. That would be something we would get into. Um, you know, just because of all the run that they're going to, you know, at least try to do against us. So it's a good thought, but you know, it's not what we do. And did you have a, get a kick out of watching the last Flake Forest game, or was it just another game that we have to study? You think, <coughs> think about the result of that? No, I didn't get a kick. No, no, not really. I mean, you saw some of the big plays, the interceptions, the, you know, the Eric Collins catching balls like this and all that. You saw them as you go, and, and you know, you sit there and say, "Great play," but you're not thinking about, "Oh, we won that game." You know, it's like. Uh, but we watched 2018 as well, you know, when Jimmy Worski got run up underneath and we lost him for the next game and the next game. Um, but we clinched the Coastal down there in 18. So, um, you know, those have been fun games and uh, a lot on the line. This one, there's not as much on the line except a chance to, to, to get victory number three. So fake slide's not in the playbook this week? Fake slide. We we did practice that a couple times out there today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the fake slide. What a joke. Have you seen anybody else do it since? No. It's not because not because it's illegal. It's because it was whatever. Carson wasn't happy about it. Huh? Carson wasn't happy about it. Yeah. Anything you saw my tweet coach? after that. So. <laughs> with, the, with, with the report out about uh, there's an investigation into Michigan with potential sign stealing, what kind of work do you guys – put into protecting your program from anyone that does try to sign seal? Is that something you guys even think about? Do you have any takes on that? Well, uh, you see our big tarps up out there. Let me tell you, you know, I'll throw it out there. Maybe the NCAA will read your article today on that question. Um, I think it's ridiculous what goes on. That doesn't shock me if it happened. I'm not accusing anybody, but, um, you know, they're, they're, to me, that's been happening for a while. And uh, I think it can happen with someone going to other games and watching stuff and stealing stuff. And I mean, you could sit, you could sit in you know, Acquisure Stadium in row five from the 50 yard line and take, you know, take Chris Peake's camera right there and just video their, their sideline the whole time. And I've heard of people doing this where they match up the video. Here's play, you know, here's the signals for play one. Here's play one. Here's the signals for play two. Here's play two. And they go, oh, okay. You know, when he taps his nose, it's an inside zone. When he taps his ear, it's an outside zone. Hey, outside, inside, right? I mean, so there's a lot of that going on, you know, and, and I wouldn't be shocked, you know, when I was at Cincinnati, I mean, this is how far it goes back. Um, when I'm at Cincinnati, there was a team we played in the conference, in the Big East Conference, that, um, you know, we heard, you know, was filming during the game. So if you go play at, you know, I'm just going to say at, uh, you know, Chris State, okay, because of you. Uh, if you played at Chris State, I don't want to name anybody, and you know you got a home game. Well, you're up in the press box from Acushure State. It happened, and we you know we played Louisville last week. We could have a camera facing and video everything I got for. So for the next year when we go there, we got all their stuff. So I've heard of that stuff going on. There's been other teams that have gotten busted for that. 
Um, it's it's you know it's, it's it's crappy sportsmanship. It's not what's supposed to happen. Whether you travel to a stadium and do it, whether you do it in your own stadium, um, you know I, I think it's tough. We worry about our signals all the time. You know we change our signals up. We change who's signaling. I think we got a pretty good you know um, beat on that. That's why offensively we do wristbands. That's why you know Whipple used to bring them over and talk to them, and you couldn't steal that signal. Steal that signal. Um, you know I, it, so there's some merit to it. Um, you know, it's hard to steal a wristband number, I think, but maybe I'm a knucklehead and I don't know they're stealing numbers and, but you know, there's a lot of numbers. Um, so, but it definitely, it definitely happens. And, um, it would be nice if someone put a stop to it. Cause it's, 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 it's not good for the game. I, I think we forgot to ask you about this Monday. Nate Arnell bumped up the number two on the quarterback depth chart. What went behind that? Um, just because he's he's working it, we feel like you know, and again, it could be anything we want to do, but um, you know, we just moved it up in there, and you know, I think you know he, he's been good in practice every day, and just kind of where we're moving. Looking at the Wake Forest quarterback situation, where their starter got benched and they brought in their backup and the backup got injured, and they had to bring the starter back in. How beneficial do you think it is for your quarterback room to wait until the bye week to bring in Christian instead of having him maybe come in a game for the lower league season? You know, you know. It's. Uh, I, I don't think it was beneficial. I'm not going to sit here and say that's that was the good call. Um, you know, it, it all depends. Everybody's got a different situation, and and uh, you know, I don't watch tape with their quarterback um, and, and see what Clawson sees or uh, uh, Ruggiero sees. So it's hard for me to answer that. But everybody's got to make their own decision based on their own timetable and and knowing their kids in that room and what's good for them. Okay, Coach. Thank you.